What's going on guys, it's Jeff for Mad Hatter's Reef and today we're going to be talking about dosing. What's going on guys, we're back with another video and if you're new to what we're doing here, this is where I talk about everything reef tank related. So if you love reef tanks like I do, gently press that subscribe button in the face. It's Sunday and you know what that means we're making a brand new Mad Hatter's Reef video and today we're going to actually jump into the world of dosing. Now a lot of you guys have been asking to do this video so I finally decided that the tank is at a point where I could actually show you guys how I go about dosing my aquarium. So when you're talking about dosing there's something that you need to talk about and that is testing your parameters. If you are dosing something in your system and you're not testing for those parameters, you are putting yourself at risk for something really, really bad to happen. And really what it comes down to is the system, my aquarium and how it's set up and being able to maintain the demands of the corals that I'm putting in my tank so they can continue to grow and thrive. So that's enough out of this intro. Let's jump into how I dose calcium and alkalinity. So I know I've already touched on it, but it is very important to bring it up again, and that is testing your parameters. You cannot dose, I mean you can, but you shouldn't dose anything into your reef tank without testing your parameters on a weekly basis. If you're not testing your parameters, you have no idea what the levels are in your aquarium, and you're gonna have a bad time. If you think that you can put stuff into your tank and not have an idea as to what the levels are, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. Quite often you guys ask me what test kits I use and for the most part when it comes to titration test kits, I use Salifert test kits. That's my preferred test kit. The test kit that I would take over a Salifert is a Hannah Checker just because it's going to take a little bit of the human element out of the reading of the parameters but ultimately what I'm waiting for is the Trident from Neptune Systems uh, they said that it was going to be out at the beginning of this year but that doesn't seem to be the case it almost looks like we're going to be dealing with another core pump type situation not that I jumped on the core pump bandwagon but the Trident is definitely something that I want to check out and it's going to make things a lot easier when it comes to testing calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium. But for now, I'll make do with the Salifert test kits. And I'm not going to get into how to use these test kits in this video. Billy Pipes has some really great videos on how to use these Salifert test kits. And I'll throw links in the description if you guys want to check those out. And if you want to pick up some Salifert test kits, I do carry them at the Mr. Reef Box shop. There's going to be some links in the description below. You don't need to be a subscriber, but if you're looking to pick up some test kits and some other goodies, check out the Mr. Reef Box shop. All right, guys, so let's talk about two-part dosing. Essentially, two-part dosing is calcium and alkalinity, and sometimes it also involves magnesium. But in the interest of keeping it simple... Let's just talk about calcium and alkalinity today. So it is very easy to dose calcium and alkalinity, and really all you need is a few things to get started. These bags of calcium and alkalinity from ME Coral mix into one gallon jugs perfectly. And there's a couple different ways that you can go about applying it to your reef tank. The low tech way would be using these one gallon jugs with dispensing pumps. Now you don't wanna take this jug and just squeeze it right into your tank. You're better off getting a measuring cup and then figuring out slowly but surely how much calcium and alkalinity you need to add to your tank over the course of a day to keep your parameters where you want them. Now, if you're a reefer on a budget or even prefer just to go with the low-tech version of things, these jugs with dispensing pumps are available from Amazon, and there's a link down in the description below if you want to check them out. Now, if you're a gearhead like myself, these peristaltic pumps are definitely the way to go when it comes to dosing. Essentially, all you have to do is set it up, calibrate it every once in a while, and it's going to add calcium, alkalinity, and whatever else you want to dose to your tank slowly in small increments over time. Now, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I've already done a review and setup of the dose from Neptune Systems as well as the DDR. In my opinion, this is probably the way to go, especially if you already own an Apex. 
The Neptune Systems DOS is hands down the best piece of equipment outside the Apex that Neptune Systems has put out there. After owning and operating this piece of equipment for over a year, I would say that this is probably one of the most essential pieces of equipment that I have for my reef tank. Now the DDR is a different situation. I don't feel that you necessarily need to own a DDR. One of those containers that we talked about earlier would serve you just fine. Now the Neptune Systems dose is controlled via Apex Fusion and to set this up properly and kind of give you guys an idea of how I go about dosing, we need to jump into our Apex Fusion dashboard. Now here is my Apex Fusion dashboard. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about this product, there is a video that I've put together on this product, how to set it up and all the components of it. So if you feel kind of lost at this moment, go check that video out and you'll have a little bit better of an understanding of what we're looking at. Now towards the middle of the screen, you can see where it says dose alkalinity, dose calcium, dose alkalinity, dose calcium. Now that is some tiles that I've set up right in the middle of my dashboard that kind of illustrate how much alkalinity, how much calcium that I've dosed over the course of a day, how much alkalinity and calcium is remaining in my DDRs. And to get into controlling these devices, just below, you see where it says dose alkalinity. There's a little gearbox to the side where it says auto. Just below that, there is the DDR, which I have closed off. The dose calcium, which also has a gearbox. If you click on those gearboxes, it opens up how much alkalinity I am dosing through that specific peristaltic pump. Now the graph above shows 100 all the way to 2400 hours and just below it you have another gearbox and it basically has the scheduling time frame for the alkalinity dose and how much it's going to dose during that time. To make adjustments all you need to do is click on the gearbox and then modify and then you can go into the time and you can set different times where you want it to start dosing alkalinity when you want it to stop dosing alkalinity whether or not you want the pump to pull or push that may have something to do with how possibly you could be using a dose for automatic water changes and then you can change the volume in last week's video i was talking about high calcium and low alkalinity and to battle that i basically started dosing alkalinity over the course of an entire day typically when i'm dosing alkalinity i do it at night so to set up a nighttime dosing schedule it needs to start at 100 and I'm going to run it until 6.30 in the morning. So that's at the point when the alkalinity will stop dosing. But I also want it to dose prior to midnight. So I need to go back in there, create a second interval and start dosing around 10 o'clock and have that run until midnight. Obviously, I don't want it to dose 25 milliliters over the course of two hours. So I'm going to back that down to about five milliliters. And currently, for what my system is requiring of alkalinity, 30 milliliters a day is keeping me around 9 dKH, which is slightly above where I want to be. But currently, everything in the tank seems to be doing fine with the 9 dKH. Uh, the only thing that seems a little upset is my big Lobo in the front. It has paled up a little bit. But over the course of time, if that continues to go that way, I might drop it down a little bit. But a lot of the SPS corals that I've recently have added are already showing signs of growth with the added alkalinity in the tank. So once I have the schedule set the way that I want it, I'm going to hit the cloud and it's going to upload to my Neptune Systems Apex. Next thing I need to address is the dose that is responsible for adding calcium to the tank. Now this is my old schedule for adding calcium but I'm not going to add that much calcium because I am well above the recommended parts per million on calcium. So I'm going to dial this back substantially. I'm going to add a little bit of calcium to the tank, but it's going to be very small amounts over the course of the day. And full disclosure, I'm actually not adding any calcium to the tank. I'm just doing this for demo purposes to show you guys how to dose calcium and alkalinity even though i'm making the adjustments in neptune systems fusion my dose is currently set to off so none of these adjustments are actually going to take place and the reason being is because my calcium is still around 480 parts per million 
and I need to get that down before I start dosing calcium again. One thing I didn't mention is the time frame for the calcium. I'm going to be dosing that from the seven o'clock hour all the way up to 10 o'clock. Now the thought process behind dosing alkalinity at night and calcium during the day is to battle pH swings. But I think in the near future, I'm going to switch to 24 seven dosing calcium and alkalinity constantly throughout the course of a day. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you got something out of this. I hope it is going to answer some questions for you, the ones that have been asking me about dosing and how I go about it. And really, the hope behind this video was to give you guys a starting point when it comes to dosing stuff into your reef tank. And I've already said it a couple times in this video, but please, please, please make sure you are testing the parameters of the stuff that you are dosing into your reef tank because you can put yourself and your reef tank at jeopardy by not knowing what the levels are in your reef tank. So we're at that point in the video where we give away a $25 gift certificate to Premium Aquatics. So let's jump into our random YouTube comment selector type thing so we can pick ourselves a winner on a subscriber who left a comment on last week's video. All right, so here we are at the random YouTube comment picker selector type thing, and the winner of the $25 gift certificate is Jonathan Wheats. Congratulations. Congratulations to the winner, and reach out to me via Facebook. I have found that's been the easiest way to get in contact with people or have people get in contact with me. Just jump over to Facebook, search Mad Hatter's Reef, and shoot me a message. And then I'll ask you a couple questions, and we'll get that $25 gift certificate to Premium Aquatics out to you. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate all the support that you guys show me each and every week. And I will see you next time right here with a brand new video.